Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Welcome to the Truth of the Matter radio program. And it's good to be back here on WKGM. Right here, ladies and gentlemen, Smithfield, Norfolk, Newport News, Portsmouth, uh, Virginia Beach, Hampton, and surrounding areas. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We do want to give you our call-in number as we are now live on this beautiful, beautiful Friday that the Lord has made. We want to say welcome, greetings, and we want everyone to feel well, right at home as we get ready to bring our Bible questions, comments, so on and so forth. It's also a blessing to be in this area. Um, joined here today. So blessed to be here with my wife. And I see some folks already calling me down from the 757 area. And we are live on the air. So please get on the phone. Tell somebody to tell anybody to tell everybody that that crazy preacher is back on the air again. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are gearing up. And can you believe how time has flown? Ladies and gentlemen, time has literally, uh, man, God is just wonderful how time has passed us. And what do you know? Today, I believe, is the 26th. Again, today is April the 26th. And that means that on this coming week, the Bible, our spring Bible class, will begin, if the Lord willing. And I want to say I'm excited because that's Thursday, May the 2nd. Uh, and that's always, as, as always, it'll be held at 1590 North Military Highway. Again, 1590 North Military Highway, the residence in. Ladies and gentlemen, I received so many text messages and calls on last week of people who are interested. Once we have at least our 25, we will have a, a class. And from that point, we will be meeting on this Thursday at the residence in for our, oh my goodness, for a life changing event. And guess what? If you haven't known, it's free, completely free of charge. The only thing it will cost you is your lives. It's going to yes, I said it. It's going to cost you your body. It's going to cost you your mind. It's going to cost you your traditions, cost you your religions, cost you your I I ideologies, cost you everything that you thought was, uh, was right. And you can trade that in for the truth of God today. I'm excited. Let me give you the numbers. I want to talk to everybody in the car, those who are on break. We're going to tell you the topics you can expect. Also, we'll be back, I believe, on Monday. So please, we want to make sure you all are listening on Monday. Uh, I may even try to get back down here on Wednesday. I'll check with the brother and see if they got anything available on Wednesday and that Thursday. I may even see if he got anything, and that way we can be here already on Thursday to make sure everyone is aware of the topics that you can expect in this Bible class. Uh, I, I do want to say to each and every one of you that are out there, please um, make it your business. Make it your business to come out on May the 2nd. This You will learn more than you've learned all of the years and all the time you've been uh, in your churches in just one Bible class. Again, did I mention it's free of charge? Come out. Come out, come out, every one of you, on May the 2nd. Well, let's get the phone lines cooking today. It's a beautiful Friday. I want to hear from you. It's good because I want to just wish, uh, I, you know, usually I'm here on, on work and I'm here. And today it's a blessing because I have my wife with me today and she's joined right here with me. And I want to celebrate and say to her, happy anniversary. It is a good thing to be here and for her to be with me on today not often do i take her everywhere and you all have already prayed my strength because you know that uh well a lot of folks are angry at what we preach and what we teach but we do want to make it clear to you that i'm blessed today to have her with me and uh to have her a part uh sharing with us i want to take as many calls as i can taking your bible questions and comments and we got one already let's go to the phone lines the number is 357-9546 Caller, you're on the air. Thank you for holding. Hi, Pastor Scrubber. This is um, Sister Elwood, such near from Norfolk. Bless you. How you doing today? Tell wife yesterday, hello, and I love her. How you doing? All right. Wonderful, wonderful. She can hear you, and she says the same thing. And uh, I'm glad to hear your voice today, and I know that you're, 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 you're learning quite a bit, and hopefully I'll be able to meet you on Thursday. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And Lord say the same. But I do have two questions. Okay. Okay, I want to um, ask you about the deaconess in the church, and I want to ask you about who, who partakes in communion. Okay, well, I'll get into those things, and she's going to make a note of that for me so we can make sure we cover both of those before we leave. So you stay locked, and if anything else you think of that you want covered, please feel free 
to give me a ring back so that we can handle that for you and answer your Bible question. So please, by all means, all means, so far we have deaconess and communion. So we'll deal with both of those. But before we go, we do want to say thank you so much and keep us up in prayer. And don't forget to tune in on Monday and tell some folks about us. All right. I sure will. All right, so we'll deal with those in just a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, we're taking your Bible questions, and I don't have to say a whole whole lot about this. By the way, let me give you the numbers again. You can call me, 357-9546 and or 622-9546. Let me give them to you again, 622-9546 and or 357-9546. Let's go to the airwaves and see. We have another call. Caller, you're on the air. Thank you for holding. Hi, Pastor Scarborough. This is Diane calling in from Chesapeake. Chesapeake. I hear from you. It's been a long time. Well, yes, we're back. Are you just hearing about us being on this station? Yes, to God be the glory. Here you're having a class coming up in Thursday, May the 2nd, I think. That's it, Thursday, May the 2nd, uh, on North Military Highway at the Residence Inn. Okay. And I would love to have you there. Oh, looking forward, if the Lord wills. If the Lord wills, I'll meet you there and you be in prayer. Tell some folks that we're on the air every Friday at 1. And the time, by the way, it will be at 7 p.m. We'll be registering and doing those things. And, of course, it's free of charge. But let me remind you that we're here every Friday on the air on WKGM at 1 o'clock. And then we'll be here a special time Monday at 12. We'll be here Monday. So... Keep us locked, and Monday we'll be here 12 noon, and then we'll let you know when we'll come on after that. We're just trying to buy all the time that we can, that we can afford, and those who will help us, we're so blessed to be there. So I'm glad you found us and that you now, we've been here since January, and a lot of people don't even know we're back on the air. So we've had to kind of start over from scratch, but I give God the glory for it. Well, I said to God be the glory for you being back on air and uh, wishing you well and looking forward to hearing uh, you give the uh, truth of the natural word. Yes, well, thank you, thank you so much, and it's very encouraging to hear from you. Now, if you have anything you want me to deal with while I'm here for these next 40 minutes, call me back because I want to just touch on any topics and also give you a list of some of the topics you can expect us to deal with in this class. Okay, then thank you, Pastor Scarborough, and uh, tell your lovely wife hello. Bless you. All right, she's over here grinning. Thank you so much. <laughs> 357 46 is the number. Again, 357 95 46 is the number. We got another caller. Let's go to the airways. Caller, you're on the air. Yes, greetings, uh, Pastor Scarborough. Are you and uh, the missus? Yes. God bless you, Rob. But you beach calling. All right. Bless you. And we're looking forward to seeing you uh, Thursday, next Thursday, the second. And I have one question. I think we touched on it almost a year ago when I was down there at the church uh, about King Solomon's uh, first wife. What was her name? I know she was an Egyptian. King Solomon's first wife. I right, we'll put that on the list. What was her name? And 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 I think I remember this some time ago, but we'll put that on there and we'll we'll, we'll go from there. Uh, brother, listen. Good to hear from you. Great to hear from you. And you stay in prayer with us this week that we may be able to go and do what say of the Lord this week. And uh, well, let some folks know we'll be back on Monday as well. The Lord's willing. Amen. And you continue to teach God's infallible word. Bless you, sir. Thank you much. God bless you. All right. Good stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all are in your cars. You've heard about it. You can ask me anything that pertains to the Bible. We don't back down from any topic. We don't back down. We got another one. All right, let's go to the last. Caller, you're on the air. Yes, sir. Peace and blessing, my brother. Wonderful. Bless uh, you, sir. Let's get this thing rolling. <laughs> and let's talk about heaven and hell right here on earth or heaven and hell in the never, never land. Uh -oh. now, I know that you spoke on this topic before, but I know that it stirs the, the spirits of all your listeners but please uh, get into this subject and uh, carry it for them. Okay, I will do that. She's writing it down, so we're going to touch on that as well. And you all are really helping me right now because all of these topics pretty much, uh, with the exception of Solomon's uh, wife, are the topics that we're going to deal with in our class in depth. So, man, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to touch it a little bit, but if you're able to ever get out on Thursdays, please come out, man. It's, we're going to do a complete teaching on heaven. And that is going to blow your mind away. We're going to talk about what heaven is and what it is not. And I'm telling you, it's everything against, I repeat. your introduction, and that's one of the reasons why I'm calling back. Because I think we all need to know in the spirit what God is all about and not what we think it is. It's not man's conception. It's God's word. That, and, and, 
Please deliver, brother. I'm, I'm going to touch on it today, and you feel free to ring me back if there's more you want us to get into. This is good stuff, and I appreciate you. And, again, tell some folks about us. Prayerfully, we'll be back on Monday at 12. Yes, sir. All right, thank you very much. Again, ladies and gentlemen, Friday's at 1, Monday's right now at 12. I don't know how long we're going to be able to do it, but thanks be to God, it's going down. Again, the number is 357-9546. 357-9546. Well, we're going to get into some of the topics, but... Well, I'll tell you what, we got another call, I believe, so let's go back to the airways. By the way, I'm enjoying all the calls because this is going to give us our base for the day. Caller, you're on the air. Hey, Pastor Rob, it's T-Town checking in with you. Portsmouth, yes, sir. Hey, uh, I wanted to, um, did you come on this past Monday? Yes, I was on this past Monday. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was on live. Ah, uh, we, uh, we didn't even know you were on this. We thought, like, last Monday, that was just, like, a special thing that you were Well, doing. it is. I, I, and let me make this clear. The only thing I'm scheduled, I guess, by contract to do is be on on Fridays. The, the engineer and those who run this station have so, let me tell you, so they blessed me because they've agreed that as long as the time is open, we can purchase those days, you know, as we need them, except, you know, of course, if they don't, uh, if they're not taken. And so I want to thank WKGM for allowing me just when we have extra money to get that extra time, I think is needed because we're getting ready to start the class. Hopefully we can make Monday an every day or every week thing. Okay. And I ain't, I want to, uh, my other question, I, I ain't trying to, you know, carry back in the old days how we used to, you know, they break down your offerings, but uh, would you prefer us to send the money to, to the church where we want to send for radio donations or just send it straight to the radio? Whatever is good for you. Many people have, most of the folks have already sent it direct to the radio. I enjoy it that way because I have no, let me tell you, I learned in the past, I've seen preachers where people will send money in, they will go and try to take the money away from the station, and then they come back later begging for money to pay for the radio. Well, one thing you can count on here, if you pay for a broadcast, the broadcast is paid for. Okay, we just want to make sure I can. Right, and I'm funny about that. Like, I, my record integrity is all I have. And, and what I want to say to you is you can always call up here and you can make the payment by debit card, I believe, and or you can always send it to our P.O. box, uh, or, and, of course, you can always get it to me direct, whatever works for you. And now that you'll be seeing me on Thursdays, the Lord willing, that will be another avenue that you can donate and be a blessing to the radio. Oh, definitely, definitely. And my, my last, I'm just throwing this out right quick, because um, I'm at work, I don't have my Bible with me. Okay. But, if, but the heaven thing, heaven and hell is so important, but if you can get a chance, I was talking to one of the brothers here, we were talking about the uh, touching out my anointing, and I don't have my Bible, I couldn't show him chapter and verse where I was explaining to him that, hey, see, later on, David even had to rebuke Saul. So it can't be talking about touching well, if it was that, he wouldn't have spoke profusely to the king. L let me help you out right here. We'll just nail that because that's that ain't, that's not going to take a long time. We'll nail that right there and say that the word touch, the word touch, when you go research the word touch, it means physical harm. Right. So people don't know that. They think that means don't say anything negative about the preacher. Well, first of all, the anointed in this scripture wasn't about a preacher. It wasn't about somebody God had anointed to do his work. The word anointed means the king. The king was always anointed because if you go back and look at Israel and you look at how their kings were selected, they were the only nation that would take and not wear a crown. The reason why they didn't wear a crown is because they believed that God would be the author or that God would be the true king. And they would do that as a sign of submission to God. So... Uh, whenever you would go against the king, the Bible says the heart of the king is in the hand of God. That's what it means to be anointed as king. Of course, David was anointed, King David. Well, here we go. When David had the opportunity, he not only rebuked Saul, he rebuked him openly, and he rebuked him sharply. So touching has nothing to do with that. What touching has to do with is that David snuck up on uh, Saul when he was asleep and had the opportunity to kill him, and uh, his, some of his associates wanted to kill him. And David said, no, don't do him any physical harm. That's what touch means. Has nothing to do with exposing these ministers, these preachers. They need to be 
touched by the scripture. They need to be exposed. Many of them, they need to be, uh, we need to come out and bring the truth. And let me tell you something, brother. We will not hasten, we will not hesitate to give the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help God, or so, so that God helps us, we know that this will be done. We thank God for you, P-Town, and prayerfully I'll be able to see you on one of these Thursdays. Right. I'm a, I, hear, I hear you Monday, and I'll see you Thursday. All right. Good to hear from you. All right. Thank you so much. That's Portsmouth, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so excited about what's going on. Yeah, I'm, everything you heard is wrong. Let me just level with everybody who's riding in their cars on lunch break. Everything you learn in Christendom, every doctrine contains flaws. Heaven, I don't even know where to begin with the things I can say about heaven. The phone lines are still open at 357 95 46. 357 95 46. Let's take another call. Caller, you're on the air. Hello, Pastor Scott. This is Brother Andrews calling from Chesapeake. How you doing today? Wonderful. Welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, I actually just wanted to see if you could... In depth. As a matter of fact, while I'm here, yeah. I know i got some topics ahead of you, but let me just dive into that just a little bit. I'll give you this much. And, of course, each one of these topics need to be taught as they will take hours to get into, but they're so interesting, I don't want to do them... Uh, uh, I don't want to do them a disservice, or should I say, an injustice. So let me say this. There is no rapture. And as far as the argument of post-trib, pre-trib, mid-trib, I am familiar with every one of those. I've debated theologians and philosophers, and I will explain to you that there is no rapture, but there is a return of Christ. Now, the return of Christ is twofold. Right. Now, I don't want to confuse you because... Everything in the word of God is twofold. You said, what do you mean? The word of God is a two-edged sword, which means everything in the scripture has two applications. One is an inward application. One is an outward application, meaning one is natural, which is physical, and the other, of course, if it's inward, is what? Spiritual. Now, Jesus Christ has a time he's going to come back dispensationally, which means in the physical future. But he also has a time he's going to come back in us. And those are two dates that the church Christianity doesn't even know about. They only know about what he's going to do outwardly. But they don't understand that before Jesus can ever come and rule this world outwardly, he has to first come inwardly. And that's the problem. I've never heard Billy Graham or T.D. Jakes even touch that. You can expect us to deal with this in the class. Now, everybody thinks Jesus is going to build this kingdom outside the world or in the outside where we can see it. That's what Jesus preached against. Jesus is going to come back, but he's going to first rule the world inside. You say, what do you mean inside? For the kingdom of God is within men. It's within man, but it has to come within men before it can be expressed outward of man. And so with that being said, the Bible says, watch for those that say, lo, here is, and there here is. Everyone that thinks they're going to the kingdom doesn't know what the kingdom is. So we're going to do a special teaching on what is heaven, where is heaven. Heaven is not a geographical location. We're going to show you that nobody has ever, I repeat, nobody has ever been to heaven except he that came from heaven. And that when the Bible talks about heavens, he talks about multiple heavens, just like the word world. Now, let me give you some teaching on the word world, because in order to understand that he said, my kingdom is not of this world. We need, you've heard Jesus say that before, right? Yes, sir. Well, what was he saying? My kingdom is not of this planet. It's not of the planets and the solar systems. It's not of physical. But my kingdom must come to your world because each individual, each person is a world. Now, people say, I never heard of that. Well, if you go to Hebrews uh, and you read in the 11th chapter, or better yet, even in the 12th chapter, it says, by faith, the worlds were framed. Go back and look at that 11th chapter. They were framed. Notice it says worlds with an S because there's more than one world. Each one of us is a world. Now, I said, some of you never heard of that, but it's in the Bible, worlds with an S, plural. My kingdom is not of this world. Well, who are the world? Well, the world isn't Earth, Mars, and Venus. That's not the world. The worlds are you and me. You say, can you prove it? Well, yes, I can. For God so loved the what? world he didn't love the planet he loved us and so understand that what god wants to do is bring his kingdom into our world so that his kingdom can take control over our world now watch this 
a kingdom is not a place. It's how a place is ran. Think about that. You're not going to a kingdom. You are a kingdom. Jesus wants to set up a kingdom in us. Then that's why when we read the so-called Lord's Prayer, by the way, that wasn't the Lord's Prayer. It says, Our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Listen to it. Thy kingdom come. But watch this. In church for years we said thy kingdom come on earth. But it doesn't say on earth. It says in earth. In earth. Go back and look at it. Then there's a great difference between on earth and in earth. You see, on earth is physical. Because now you're talking about the planet, but in earth is us. Because we are the earth, we come from the dust, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. So what does God say now? God wants to come in us. He wants his will to be done in us. Because if his will can be done in us, now he's starting to judge us while we are right here. Yeah, I said it today. I'm going to show you that the judgment of God is not going to come way in the future. Judgment is already starting in some people right now. Now, you say, I never heard of that. That's why the Bible says the saints will judge the world. Well, how can the saints judge the world? Only after they've been judged themselves. Well, I thought judgment day hadn't come yet. It hasn't. But to the saints, it, it has begun. For the Bible says judgment must begin at the what? House. House. Now, you know what that means? Not in the church building. Look how crazy we've been. The house of God is our bodies. For our body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. Right. Same thing with the church. And whenever the New Testament speaks of church. It's, it's talking about the body. The building. That's right. And remember, we're the body of Christ, which means Christ is the head. We are his body. We function according to his leading, which is he is the brain. We are his movements. We are his activity. We are everything. We are the Christ. People say, I never heard of that. Did you know the Bible teach that the Lord has his Christ? You say, I never heard of that. That's right. I'm going to say it again. You need to come to this class. I'm going to show you that the Bible teaches that Christ has a Christ. Wow. I, 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 that may be a new term right there to you. It's not new. It's in the book. Again, the Lord, which is Jesus the Christ, has his own Christ. Yeah, that, that's interesting. I believe that. I think I, I, I remember reading something because most, a lot of people think Christ is Jesus' last name. That's yeah, and it's not. Christ is the function of Jesus, the anointed one. He's, he's the Christ. There you go. He's the anointed one. Now, the anointed one means he was anointed. Who was he anointed by? The Father. The Father anointed the Son. Now watch this. The Bible says, Jesus said it this way, just like the Father has sent me, now I have sent you. Just like he was the light of the world, Jesus said we are the light. Jesus was the salt. Now guess who's the salt? We are. Because they'll never see Jesus, but except Jesus have a body. Now I wish I had time to really teach it, but let me give you something to interest you. When God, and remember God is a spirit. You can't see him. The Bible says he's an invisible God. But so what God had to do was create something that could be seen. Because you couldn't see the spirit. So he made a body. That body was Jesus the Christ. For the Christ was in that body. Now, after Jesus died and got rid of his body on the cross, now he went back to being what? Spirit. Spirit, right. So now he still needs a body. Think about it. Right. And that body is us, the body of Christ. Man. Now watch this. If you don't believe, somebody said, well, he don't still need a body. Oh, yes, he does. Colossians 1.24 says that we must fill up the afflictions of Christ in the body. That means there's more suffering that has to be done to, G to Christ. But it's not going to be done to the spirit. It's going to be done to us as we live out those afflictions in our body. Now, what that means is. We must suffer with Christ. Now you see why the Bible says we must suffer with him. With and and then, then it says we must be crucified with him. See, we don't know why this. We just read the Bible, but we don't understand why they're saying these things. So, yes, Christ. Now, I'm going to prove to you something that you, you only can. You have to have spiritual eyes to see. Remember when Saul was persecuting the church. Remember a voice came from heaven and spoke to him and said, Saul. Why has thou persecuted me, he said, right. Now, who was talking? Jesus. 
Jesus, right. But Jesus had already died. Right. So why would he say you persecuted me? Because we are the Christ. Christ. Did you catch that? Yes. Amen. Even though Jesus was gone, now we are his body that's still on earth. And we must suffer because watch this, brother. And this is something Christianity don't believe in at all. By the way, I'm teaching right now. Watch this. It, Jesus did not die in our place. That's false doctrine. And that's what Billy Graham, T.D. Jakes, and every other preacher teaches. Yes. That's called the doctrine of substitution. We're, I used to preach it. Jesus died so I wouldn't have to die. And all of this hooping and hollering. Well, no, brother. Jesus never died in our place. He died so that he could later die in us. And you say, well, I never heard of that. Well, everything that happens outward has to happen inward. And so it's never any good to just have a historic Jesus. It has to become alive in us. Right. So Jesus has to be born where? In us. In us. He has to live in us. As he lives in us, we'll start to look like him. And as he looks like, as we look like him, we'll be persecuted. Why? Because they, they don't really hate us. They hate him. Right. Because all they're seeing is him in us. Then we'll be crucified with him. But we'll be raised together in his likeness. In his likeness. Brother, Amen. this is a teaching that we're going to do called the Christ Amen. Christ. Because, yes, Christ has a Christ. And, no, he did not die for us. And let me tell you something. One scripture, this is going to blow your mind. Don't let it, don't, I don't want it to shake you up. One scripture even declares that Jesus has yet to die for some people. And this is going to shock you. Mm. We know he has died for everyone historically. Please don't wrap my words the wrong way. Right. I, anybody that says Jesus did not die, of course, is teaching false doctrine. Right. But the scripture says, if there be no resurrection among you, then your preaching is in vain. There must come a time when his resurrection becomes alive in you, and that can't be done historically. That has to be done today. Now, why do you think the revelation of Jesus is, was, and is to come? People don't understand. You can never understand the revelation of Jesus unless you understand that it never applies to the future or never just applies to the past. It must apply to the past, present, and the future. Right. And that's another thing that Christianity has taught us wrong. So, brother, you stay tuned. You help me. Amen. Call me back if you have any more questions because I'm running out of time. Praise God. Thank, thank you, brother. I appreciate that, Pastor, and uh, God bless you and your wife. Thank you very much. We appreciate you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh -huh. you haven't heard anything yet. Let me go through some of the topics. Um, deaconess. I'm not going to go far. Y'all, by the way, the phone lines are open. Y'all keep the questions coming. 357-9546. Again, 357-9546. Let's go to the phone lines, and I'm going to tell you about deacons. Carla, you're on the air. I'm confused, preacher. I want to know why the preachers down there, down here in the 757, are saying the same thing that you're saying. You said why they're not saying it? Why aren't they saying the same thing? Well, I'm going to tell you what I think is going on right now. Shock. I think they've been listening, and their members have been telling them to listen to me. I've challenged them since I've been here. i put money on the line, and I've had nobody to truly stand up and challenge what I'm saying, even though everything I'm saying is the exact opposite of everything these churches are preaching. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's, it's confusing me. Well, I, I'm going to tell you what it is. They're scared. Okay. That's it. There's no other way to put it. Do you think I would allow them, the big as my mouth is, you think I would allow a preacher to come to Richmond, Virginia, where my home is, and allow them to, to challenge everyone there, and nobody stand up in Smithfield, Newport News, Norfolk, and Virginia Beach, and nobody say nothing? I would dare a preacher to come into my city. As a matter of fact, Juanita Bynum came to my city, and I challenged her. She gave me 48 hours to live. That was over a year ago. Wow. And so I want you to know that the Bible says that we must be watchmen over the city. We have to be watchmen. And so I'm going to challenge them again today. 
Are there any preachers down there that would, would like to call the radio station and at least say something? Well, you just asked them. We'll see. Oh, okay. You just, you All just, right. you just asked them. We will see. All right. All right. Hey, appreciate you, brother. Okay. A lot of things going to come out because we're going to show you that there is no such thing as a deaconess. That's right. I, I can't teach you about deaconess. We got another one. Let's go to the phone lines. Caller, you're on the air. Hi, praise the Lord, Pastor Rob. This is Virginia B. Second in. Bless you. Yeah, and I want to say happy anniversary to you and your lovely wife. Thank you very much. And she said thank you as well. Yeah, and may y'all have a blessed and prosperous one. Wonderful. And tell her I'm, I'm enjoying all the good things God is doing in her life. <laughs> well, yeah, she, well, she, she says thank you very much. I don't know if you can hear, she can, you can hear her or not, but she said thank you. So, but we appreciate you. I got That's, a question. Okay. Um, it's a two-fold one. Um, the question is, first of all, I think one of the questions is how to, uh, what is walking in the spirit? And the second part of it is how do you walk in the spirit? Because I think that's so crucial to us knowing um, really to be able to be in the spirit realm um, that a lot of us don't know um, what walking in the spirit means as well as how to walk in the spirit. Well, so, that is a very, very good, good question. And I'm going to say this. I'll get into a little bit because I want to take as many as I can before next week. Uh, I know you know how to get me anytime, but I'm going to get as much as I can. And I'll say this. Know that when you're walking in the spirit, you're no longer walking in the flesh. They are opposites. And I want to say this out there. To, thank you so much, sister, for calling. I want to say this nothing. in Radio Lamb. Walking in the spirit is walking in the light. Walking in the light is walking in the word. Walking in the word is walking with God. Walking with God is fellowship with God. Walking with fellowship is communion with God. To commune with God is to walk in the light. Ladies and gentlemen, nothing that is flesh can profit us. Everything that walking by the spirit means we must leave the physical realms. We, we must not only leave the physical realms, we must leave every idea of natural beliefs and thoughts in order to understand the words which Jesus said, my words are spirit. Let's go to the phone lines. Caller, you're on the air. Thank you for tuning in. Yes, my name is Annie. Uh, I'm calling from Suffolk, Virginia. Right, and welcome. Yes, and I normally listen to you um, every Friday because that's my lunch break at 1 o'clock. Well, good, great. I'm glad you can enjoy it. Uh, praise the Lord, I was able to get through it and, you know, actually call you like you said, call. Thank you. I really appreciate that. I drive all the way here from Richmond just to come on for 45 minutes. I take an hour and a half trip to come on for 45 minutes and I go back home. So when you all call me, it really encourages me because I'm here for you. And I do want to remind you, please put on your calendar that on Thursday night we'll be here in this area. And we're going to teach you on this and a lot of topics that I'm going to name for you as soon as you hang up. Okay. My question is on Todd because I even listened to a preacher on Sunday. And he uh, said, oh, yeah, that did apply to the Old Testament. But Jesus didn't speak about it in the New Testament because... Uh, it, what he was saying didn't make any sense, so I'm trying to... He was lying to you. Everybody just referring to Malachi, and that, like you said, referred to... The priest. The, the preacher at that time, so... I'm going to do a complete teaching I, on tithing. Live in the New Testament, because Jesus died for us, while we always refer back to the Old Testament when it comes to money. Well, because it's convenient. Thank you so much, sister. Let me answer that. We are going to deal with tithing, uh, and I want to definitely... Open the phone lines back up. Thank you so much, sister. We are going to deal with tithing. There is no tithing in the New Testament. Jesus didn't tithe. The apostles didn't teach it. Any preacher demanding you to tithe is a fraud, whether he knows it or doesn't know it. I'll challenge anybody under the sound of my voice. I don't have a lot of time, but I've proven it. I've called all around. I've talked to Creflo Dollars Ministries. I've talked to different ministries all over the seven cities. I've had my life threatened, and I'm here to tell you the truth is, God does not require a tithe in the New Testament. He does require that we give, but it's not up to any man that we should give a certain amount, but it's only by what God has blessed us by. We ought to give without, without necessity and not under a, a compulsion or pressure. So, yes, tithing is a lie. And any preacher listening to me in the seven cities, my time is running out. You've been lied to. You've been lied to. 
That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Come out Thursday, our first class. We're going to deal with tithing. We're going to deal with speaking in tongues. Let me just run through these because I'm running out of time. The number is 357-9546. And before I go, I'm going to give you a number that you can text me if you're interested in going to the class. I'm going to give you, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give you a list, and I'm going to give you a number you can call me or text me after this broadcast. All right, I want to make that clear. So many people have already texted me. Um, so many people have already texted me and made me made it clear. They've called me th throughout the week. I take calls and say, hey, put my name on the list. That number you can call me and text me even while I'm on the air is 804-714-4844. All right, let me give that to you again. You can text me even while I'm on the air. That way I can put your name on the list. 804-714-4845. Again, 804, that's my personal number, 714-4845. We're going to talk about salvation. We're going to show you that nobody is saved by saying the sinner's prayer. We're going to show you that you're not saved by water baptism. We're going to show you that communion has nothing to do with juice and crackers. We're going to show you it has nothing to do with bread and wine. Communion is much deeper. And now that we move from out of the flesh into the spirit, we're going to open up that understanding. We're going to show you about the right hand of fellowship. We're going to walk you through the Garden of Eden. We're going to show you that Satan was never a perfect angel. Satan was never the head of the choir and he never got kicked out after he turned on God and God had to do something about it. All of that is a fable and a fairy tale and it's what you learn in your church. We're going to talk about no trinity. There is no trinity. Did y'all hear what I said? God's only one. He's not schizophrenic, and he doesn't mean three. We're going to show you that hell is not the lake of fire. Oh, you're not going to want to miss these classes coming up. Text me, every one of you, 804-714-4845. We're going to show you the effects of binding and loosing. We're going to show you what it really means, blessings and curses. We're going to teach you on the occult and demons and understanding how they move, how they operate. We're going to show you all of the lies of Christianity that we might get back to what God is. He is holy, and he said for us to be that way. We're going to walk you through legalism. We're going to show you each and every, I get, I'm getting text messages even as I'm speaking right now. Yes, I hear you. Yes, I hear you, Alicia. I hear you, Latrice. I hear you. Each one of you that are texting me, I'm getting texts even as I'm speaking right now at 804-714-4845. We're going to talk about the occult. We're going to talk about having artifacts and images in your home. We're going to talk about how you should never have a picture of Jesus in your house. Wow. We're going to show you that it should never be in the church. That it should never be Jesus on a cross hanging around your bishop's neck tucked in his pocket. We're going to show you that the holidays like Christmas and Easter, we're going to show you that, that God has nothing to do with them at all. Ladies and gentlemen, we got so much to go over in such a short time. We're going to walk you through it today. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to talk about the order of the church, the job of the man, the job of the woman, the job of the family. We're going to walk you through these things. We're going to show you what the 144,000 represent. People are calling me now, but I can't take your call till I get off the air. So you can either text me or call me later. But ladies and gentlemen, I want to make it clear. I want to make it clear to you. We're going to show you that. We got two minutes left. Let me give you my personal number, and I'll be back on Monday at 12 noon, 804-714-4845. That's my personal number, y'all. Text that number. I'm getting text messages left and right. 757-757-757. I'm so excited about you all. I will be seeing this week. Meet us here Monday at 12 noon. Again, if you would like to come to the Word Church, our, our nearest location for right now, because we're going to, there will be a building here very soon. I believe God for that. But the closest place we have is on Sundays in Richmond, Virginia. People travel down all the time. It's at 12 noon. So you got time to get up and make it down. And that address is 4108 West Clay Street. 4108 West Clay Street. And that's in Richmond, Virginia. Ladies and gentlemen, I do want to remind you, my personal number as we're closing is 804-714-4845. That's right. Write that number down. You can get more information. If you miss me, text me or keep calling me throughout the weekend. I will get to you. Please, please, this is the week. 
we begin the change of your life. You will never be the same. Everyone that takes this class will know more than the preachers know in the seven cities. Yeah, I said it. We prepare and train even our young kids to know what these preachers will know because knowledge is your only defense. Ignorance is what's attacking you, but knowledge is your defense. We got 30 seconds left. Let me give you my personal number. Folks are texting me again, 804 714 Also, to answer your question about Pharaoh's daughter, I had to go back and look at it again, but if I'm not mistaken, it is King, uh, or rather not Pharaoh's daughter, but Solomon's wife, which was Pharaoh's daughter. You may want to look at 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 1 through about 5 or 6. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm getting ready to go. I'll see you all again on Monday. Please call me if you need more time, if you need directions to the church on Sunday. Show up and God will show out. We're the only church that you can bring your questions and their answer live in service. Write them down and give them to the usher when you come in the door. Gotta go. See y'all Monday at 12 noon.